Imaging is another big change in technology. We can now see at atomic resolution um, 3D movies. Uh, sometimes with only a small number of molecules, but it's enough to just be blown away. And this goes all the way up and through to being able to image uh, organisms like ourselves in incredible detail. And we can now change a whole bunch of pieces of science which were focused previously on really understanding things in bulk, where we did things as a, as a behavior of, of a group of molecules that we thought were all working together when we can actually look at the individual molecules doing stuff live in front of us, um, uh, it changes the way we, we can do research on these things. Now that's true for biology, cellular biology, molecular biology. It's probably going to be just as true for other pieces of nanotechnology as well. This ability to get atomic level 3D movies is remarkable. Another great technology is about genome editing. So when scientists do research, we very often want to test a very precise thing. What happens if you have just this difference in your DNA versus this other difference? Often we're doing it in an animal model, maybe zebrafish or mice, or we're doing it in a, in a very basic organism like yeast or the, the worm. And there used to be a way, or there still, and there still is a way, of making those changes, but it's very laborious. Genome editing allows us to make very, very precise changes on a whole variety of organisms incredibly easily. Now, this is great for research. Just to emphasize, this is not doing it in the context of living humans. We do it for human cells to understand cells, but we're never going to be making a different human, for example, using this technology. Um, but it's really enabling for research. I think it will have broader applications, in particular in synthetic biology, and in agriculture, 